Hey guys, Jordan here from the WLMA, and if you're a wedding photographer or a filmmaker, I have a really exciting video for you today. So Manny, founder of Is and Live Films and founder of We Are Creative Podcast, uh, invited me on his podcast a couple weeks ago where we got to dive into some really awesome stuff about entrepreneurship, the struggles, the journey, things you must overcome. So if you want to learn more about me, us, the WLMA, my journey from being a janitor to building a six-figure wedding photography business to now building the WLMA where we have almost a thousand students right now and we're helping a ton of them get to those six figure to deep six figure goals. And you wanna learn more about the personal struggles and things we've had to overcome in that specific journey. So you can find inspiration for yourself. You're gonna love this podcast episode that I got to be a part of. So without further ado, I'm gonna start rolling the 40 to 50 minute podcast episode. A ton of great value in there. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our best content. And after the podcast, be sure to check out the description of this video. I'm gonna be sharing the link so you can follow We Are Creative Podcast, so you can follow Manny and Ashley and Islam Films on other social media platforms as well. And if you want to make sure you hit up some of our free resources to scale to those six figure to deep six figure levels, I'm going to add that in the description of the video as well. Without further ado, let's get started. See you on the podcast. First of all, welcome to an episode of the We Are Creative podcast. It's a podcast for all creatives, um, really just showing people that we're all just still figuring it out no matter what stage of the creative field that you're in. So um, it's going to be a treat today because um, I really do feel like a lot of people can learn from your story and learn from your work ethic and, and just the things that you've built. And also I'm excited because I personally am a fan of awesome. your, <laughs> your work and, and the things that you do. So without further ado, why don't you go ahead and um, just give us an intro, who you are, what you do, and maybe what kind of got you into it. Yeah, so I'm I'm Jordan Caressis, co-founder of uh, the WLMA, and basically what we are. So at the WLMA, um, I 100% believe we are the most result-based business mastermind for wedding photographers and filmmakers right now. And we pretty much dive into everything, teaching advertising, funnels, sales, marketing, branding, all that type of stuff to take wedding photographers and filmmakers to scale their businesses instead of taking you know years to get to these right. levels that a lot of people want to get often getting there in like six to 12 months which is insane i wish i experienced that <laughs> yeah me too <laughs> but yeah that's pretty much what we do yeah man jordan it's it's just crazy the fact that you um you have built this empire essentially that really helps people and it's really evident in your work. It's really evident in the course, um, how much you just want people to succeed. So what started first? Because I mean, I'm a member of the course and I'm, you know, I, I, the results that I've had, me and my wife have had, it's just have been so incredible. And I wish I would have just done it sooner. So what got you into this? Like, were you always an entrepreneur? Was it just photography? Yeah. Like what kind of got you started? What, what did you first pick up? That's, uh, it's an interesting journey um, because, I went to college. I went to college for for photography. Okay. Um, learned a little bit of business, and when I was kind of there, you know, I didn't I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I was in college, and I thought this would be a great path. I kind of got into photography through being a missionary um, okay. in Peru and Bolivia, and I was wow. like, oh, you can even do this. That's kind of cool. Yeah. And um, I when I got back from my missionary year, um, this was I was, I was I think I was coming back as a sophomore or junior I don't quite remember but then I started studying photography and it when I thought that I was just going to be able to become a photographer you know when I graduated college yeah. and things are going to be great but it turned out it was so much more difficult than than I thought and that's when I ended up in this long journey you know I, I ended up graduating college I ended up having to work as a a janitor because I couldn't have a successful business. How old were you at the time? Oh, what was this? Maybe like 10 years ago. Okay. 10, 10, nine years ago. Okay. Um, so I'm 31 right now. So I was okay. I'm 30. In my, uh, lower 20s and everything. Okay. 
And I remember I was so em embarrassed because I was working as a janitor. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I should be having, you know, my, my photography career and, and everything. Yeah. People, people would come that I know would see me. And I'd always have like a story. Of, yeah, this is just kind of a, a side thing. I'm going <laughs> to get out of this. Oh, I'm no, actually man. a wedding photographer. Yeah. I felt so humiliated kind of right. in, that, in that sense. And I ended up in this really long journey learning more about all these business strategies um, and I, and I kind of went into this deep abyss of learning all these different things and excited. I found a deep passion in learning those things. I almost honestly, it was enjoying learning about more about this than photography itself. Yeah. The, the marketing aspect of owning a business is like, it's essential for creatives and so many creative people don't have that business mindset behind it. So, you know, as you were, you know, cleaning the floors and maybe scrubbing the toilets and really were you kind of in your own head a little bit too? Like, just like, man, I got to get out of here. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Um, and it's a huge part of why I, of why I often say this, uh, this quote I, I tweeted like a long time ago, where it's mm -hmm. like, turn your pain into motivation, your motivation yeah. into discipline, your discipline into your, your habits. And this area was my pain. This yeah. is the beginning of my journey when I was like, I was so angry <laughs> with yeah. my current situation. And angry in the right place can be a great motivator sure. to do the things that you need to do. I was so frustrated with my situation where I was just diving into this world. I didn't have any wedding photography um, mentors at the time. I didn't know where, mm -hmm. where to go. So I started finding a lot of mentors outside of the wedding industry, reading a ton of books and just diving kind of into this world of learning how the heck do you grow a business? Mm -hmm. What are these people doing? And can I do this for the wedding industry? And like testing those things. Right. So you started with photography. So you kind of had to like insert yourself into the mud, so to speak, and get in on the field to kind of yeah. understand the process behind everything else. So what was your first camera? Like, did you have to save up for that? Well, like, cause I know a lot of people deal with those pain points. Like, man, I gotta get my first camera. Like, what do I get? That kind of thing. 100%. First camera was a T1i. T1I that. that my dad gave me that he did, he didn't use it. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember uh, it was, I don't remember when I, when I found it, but it was probably vaguely during that time when I was a missionary uh, in the beginning of my college years. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I think I want to be, I thought I was going to be a photojournalist at that time. Oh, okay. So you can so, kind of see how those two things kind of work together. Exactly. Like documentary style of uh, photography. Yeah. And that's kind of where a lot of my style in photography yeah. came and what, what my clients really loved. And so I got this little T1I, I was shooting, you know, documentary stuff, street photography in, in yeah. Peru and Bolivia. And when I got back, that's what I was, what's what I was shooting weddings with. Mm -hmm. And that's why I 100% believe a lot of people, they think that they need like the, the I mean, it helps, 100% helps. Yeah, they need absolutely. like the latest gear to dive into the business. Mm -hmm. But honestly, you know, if you have great work, um, you can get pretty great weddings even with like a probably to this day you probably won't be using a t1i but a t7i a t5i, a t5i. <laughs> something like that. yeah i shot on a t5i that was my first wedding it was also 300 dollars for 12 hours yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think my first wedding my first wedding was uh it was free i had i had i shot one wedding for free the second one i had was like 800 dollars. i drove all the way from like from Tennessee to Michigan. <laughs> wow. Probably all that money went on just oh. the expenses for that. But I knew that was an opportunity I needed yeah. to build my portfolio like at that time. Mm -hmm. And were, did you grow up a creative person or is this something you discovered kind of in your 20s? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I did as, as far as wow. I was more of an athlete. Um, okay. As, okay. As, as a kid. Okay. And you still Arts, do sports today? Yeah, I still do sport, a lot of sports today. Photography, honestly, I think was is the only artistic thing I really did. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess you could say maybe writing is maybe something writing in poetry ish. It's kind of a thing I, I still okay. kind of do to this day. Okay. Um, but, but photography was the first artistic thing. Yeah. And I wasn't natural, naturally good at it. Mm. um and that's but, important to hear for for yeah. people like you don't have to be naturally born with it like what steps did you take no. to start to learn that what hours were you putting in yeah uh so as far as the steps it took I'm 100% like a book learner yeah um I had there I, I I got a lot of books from some of my favorite photographers 
Robert Valenzuela is where I learned like a lot of things when it came to posing. Okay. Um, when it came to, honestly, I think when it came to like uh, edits and stuff, that was just through like a lot of friends and everything. Sure. And kind of, like, trial and error. Trial and error. When it came to lighting, what is that book called that I have? Uh, Michael Freeman. Okay. Michael Freeman. He's a photojournalist. I have like all his books like right behind me right now. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And all his books, he has ones on like, composition on on lighting mm -hmm. all these different things he, his books was a huge way for me to learn because the way he articulates um photography and composition and how to tell a story was totally different and it made me see photography in a whole new light that you can you were articulate able to it and learn it in that way yeah see the layout of how like why we position why we backlight why yeah, we diffuse, his thought why, process yeah and that's huge that, yeah and so people um i i think Another thing I always want to hammer home in these episodes is, you know, it takes, there's so much beyond just shooting the picture, right? There's so much yeah. beyond um, just being good at your craft. You have to be an expert and a master at your craft, especially if you're going to sit here and, and rise above the rest of the, of the industry, so to speak. W would you agree 100%. with that? A hundred percent, especially nowadays, mm -hmm. you know, when I was getting into, even when I was getting into it within five, 10 years ago, there, it wasn't as saturated as it is now. Yeah. Without technology and everything is. So even more than ever, your, your craft has to really stand out. Yeah. You can have the best marketing strategies in the world, mm -hmm. you know, and have that knowledge, be able to implement those things. But if your product and your service doesn't speak on its own, it's going to be very difficult to be successful in this industry. Yeah. So you got to have the whole package when it comes to landing, booking, like closing these, you know, high ticket, whatever you're trying to get. Right. So what exactly. was the, um, what was kind of like the inception point of WLMA? Where did the name start to come up? Where did, what mm -hmm. did the idea as you were shooting your photography, you're shooting weddings, you're getting paid. You're like, okay, what can I do beyond this? Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so the whole idea of the like the mental program and coaching and stuff mm -hmm. came up maybe about five years ago. Okay. Where wow. so we're it's, able it's to still relatively new. Yeah. Where we we were finally before that we are finally to get to where we we wanted in in our wedding photography business. We we're yeah. maybe hitting maybe like eight to fifteen thousand plus months um, and everything as well. That's awesome. Uh, pretty consistently, and we're like. And I knew for, in, in the beginning of this, I knew that teaching the stuff that I've learned was something I, I knew I wanted to do because I loved it so much, mm -hmm. but I needed to wait until I hit a certain level myself. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that you have, have like that, proof of the pudding, essentially. Yeah, pr the proof of concept uh, as well, you know, because you never want to teach something right, that you're not sure even works, yeah. you know? Right. And so it's, it, once we kind of got to that level, we started mentoring students um and just kind of like one-on-one -on -one coaching kind of thing. Okay. this is maybe five years ago and when and it was our, our course and the things we were teaching was very ghetto at that time you know <laughs> it it was it was what you see as you can see now the course is super refined oh as, it's, it's as even, as like even in 2.0 it's very refined i'm like whoa yeah they, exactly like, yeah <laughs> and but then it was it was kind of all over the place, but the strategies and the principles were still there. But okay. the students who really were able to grasp that what we are teaching, they were, were able to get to those ten to twenty thousand dollar months like yeah. pretty quickly. You know, sometimes even hitting that like their first month or two in the program. And, and I was and was, when that kind of happened, I wish that happened with me, but I had all that trial and error, like yeah. figuring all this stuff out. But when that kind of happened, it was kind of like. We got something here. <laughs> yeah. Like what you're teaching is, is man, I can use this for any business in the future. Now hundred percent, all, all the strategies. So you're teaching like the core basics, but it doesn't negate like you still have to work very, very hard. So yeah. Explain a little bit about like what about the structure is simple, but what do people need to build on? Mm. The simplicity is, is this, and this is a philosophy that it's not a new philosophy or, or mm -hmm. anything like that, but something that I've even to this day now I'm building much more clarity with. Yeah. But when it comes to most businesses, I view everything as a funnel. Even, mm -hmm. you know, let's say that restaurant where people find out about them from word of mouth and a billboard. 
Yeah. That's some sort of a funnel in a way. Right. You're trick. You're getting the most amount of attention there. Exactly. And then if you start viewing every business like that, you can see they're, they're top of the funnel where they're actually gathering attention, the middle of the funnel where that attention starts to nurture and the very bottom of the funnel where they actually make the acquisition of that mm. sale. And when you view everything in those variables, you can really see where, where there are leaks yeah. and where things can be improved. And when you see, when you kind of start looking at things in that like scientific testing manner where there's variables, you know, and you see these three variables of the funnel, where are these leaks, where is it strongest, what can be improved, sure. you can pretty much improve any business mm. as far as that, it, with that philosophy in mind. And so that's how, because like one of the things I learned wasn't from wedding photographers, you know, uh, right. it, was, it was through other businesses. And I was like, this funnel concept, how can we make this work for weddings in particular? Mm. And that's kind of how that, that began. Um, and so when, once we started getting results like that for, for our students sure. and uh, when, when it was just mentoring and then it was about four years ago when we decided to actually launch the, the WLMA. I don't remember where it came from. Crystal and I, we were probably brainstorming stuff. I think Wedding Lead Machine came because we viewed the system as a machine. Right. All these systems in place that need to work together. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of how it came about. And we, we stuck with it <laughs> to this day. I mean, it, it works. WLMA, yeah. Wedding Lead Absolutely. Accelerator. Yeah, it works, works really well. And now almost a thousand, I, mean, I believe it's like 800, almost 800 students to this day from the past four years. So it's been wow. pretty crazy where it's grown from just like one-on-one -on -one mentoring, you know, five years yeah. ago. <laughs> yeah, very much so. And you know, what's interesting is you started this and maybe you didn't have the intention to grow it where, where it's to where it's been right now. So, you know, a lot of people and very recently, especially in season three of this podcast, we've talked a lot about why mm. and that why Jordan, like, I think the most valuable thing that WLMA te teaches is it picks apart the person themselves and teaches you, why are you even here doing this? Why yeah. do you believe that having that why can carry you through and really mold and shape your business into something very successful? 100%. Um, I'm going to dive into that one quote I, I said earlier. Yeah. I was, I was tweeting and everything where it's like, your pain becomes your motivation. Your motivation becomes your discipline. Your discipline becomes your, your habits. And there's one thing I kind of started adding to that. Your habits eventually need to become a mission. Yeah. And as you can see, if you really pay attention to the, the journey of like those words right there, it goes from short term to long term. Yeah. Motivation from your, your pains doesn't last very long. It's just a fleeting emotion that can be there. Um, your dis discipline is kind of the next step, but even so you can get burnt out just from discipline. Mm. Habits is where you really want things to be because your actions on what you're doing to take whatever you're doing for your business, you can really take things to the next level and it's your actions are just ingrained in who you are. Yeah. But then the next step is your mission because this is the why and what, why you do what you do. Um, and, and that's where you're really doing something that's bigger than yourself. Mm. And that's where um, I think the deepest level of, of motivation and your discipline should come, should, a, should eventually root from is an overall mission. You've done all this stuff. Maybe it started from your pain, but now you've done all this stuff and you need to push something, push your business for something that's greater than yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah. And it's, and it's greater than money. At yeah, almost 100%. I, I, think, I think everybody I've talked to on this podcast is just like, yeah, I've hit this before, but it's not like it's a fleeting thing, right? You yeah. can't grasp on to that amount because you're always going to want more and things are always going to be inflated and you're going to have to pay more money's money. But it, I think we're getting to the point of like, man, like this is life. Like you can mold and shape your life and you're teaching that to people too. You're teaching people yeah. that you can have control of your leads I'll tell, I'll say this, like we didn't have, man, we used to struggle for like five leads every three months Yeah, prior, prior to the course. <laughs> and we just released another ad and it's like eight leads in two days. Mm. And you, we started it halfway through the day. You know what I mean? So it's like, 
these things that are happening, like it makes everything predictable, but there's so much work behind all of the, the skeleton that you present. But when you can kind of get into it, there's so many results from it. 100%. For, your, for yourself, though, the creating something of this magnitude, right? Right. Business and where people are, you know, you're not at the mercy of what people say about it, but like it's results based, right? You hope you yeah. get results. I mean, it takes a lot out of a person. So what's, what changes in your daily life, your personal life that you have to make um, in order to keep pushing and keep growing to what WLMA is today? Yeah. As far as daily life, um, you know, probably are you talking about like my actual like day-to-day -day work life past yeah. sacrifices or yeah, like, sac like things that you had to start sacrificing that weren't probably the best things yeah you know what I mean totally understand what you mean I think in the past I would first jump into the past and what it may have have looked like mm -hmm. um you know even before WLMA this okay. is like when we're figuring out our wedding photography business and I think this is really important for for people who are, who are really serious in becoming successful entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You know, before, <clears throat> before all this happened, we had to sacrifice one, where we lived and, and two, where our money went. Yeah. So we could invest in things that helped us grow. Mm -hmm. So number one, you know, Crystal and I, we lived in a, a basement for, for quite some time um, because we had a bigger, we didn't have to, but right. we had a bigger mission of what we wanted in the long term. I'm in there with you with the garage, bro. You know, yeah. like, in the garage. <laughs> it was so, furnished. <laughs> you know, we and we were like, you know, sacrifices now to yeah. because we have this bigger and not everyone's gonna understand that as well. Sure. Because it took a lot of getting rid of of, of our our ego mm. of what are other people gonna think. You know, instead of thinking people that were successful now, let's not worry about that now. Yeah. And let's save up the money so we can have the capital to test and grow all these different things. Yeah. And a Man, lot of that money. So powerful. So powerful. Yeah. It's, it's so important. And honestly, a lot of that money went to mentors. You know, I, I did find a lot of books, a lot of people I could talk to for free every once in a while. Sure. But sometimes the really busy people who I really wanted to learn from, you know, I, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars learning from those people outside of the wedding industry and seeing how I could replicate this in the wedding industry. Wow. Um, and those are probably the biggest sacrifices in the beginning. And those are things that a lot of people need to know um, because a lot of people say they want to be you know, successful wedding photographers or successful entrepreneurs, but they're not willing to make those types of sacrifices in the beginning. Yeah. You have to sacrifice some lifestyle that you may want, but 100%. you're just not ready for because... I mean, like I said, these things are fleeting, but what's your bigger mission? Exactly. Exactly. I would say now, you know, now it's different because mm -hmm. it's, it's a totally different place in the business. Um, but I would say now it's, it's, and I, I enjoy, I almost don't call them sacrifices because I, I, I love it now, but yeah. it is a lot of time testing a lot of new things. Uh, a lot of time in the business to grow it and learn how, what we can do to grow other students' businesses mm -hmm. as well. So I didn't want this to just be something you see this all the time in the education industry now, where it's someone just kind of throws, and this is what people think they can get away with. Mm -hmm. And why a lot of people have almost turned like the education industry as like a, a scam thing. Yeah. Right? That's what it kind of turned to. Because what it turned to, people thought that they could just create crappy products where it's like, oh, we'll just give you a course. You never hear from us again. <laughs> Let me take it. Let me take your money and we're done. Yeah, Bye. You never hear from us again. Right. But in order to build something that is very result based, you know, um, we have a lot of students now even hitting those 100,000 to close to half a million dollar years. Yeah. And, and, it, and we would have never done that by just throwing a course out there mm -hmm. and just be like, all right, you guys are on your own. Yeah. Kind of thing. You and Crystal and your team seem not seem you guys actually care a lot about 100%. what you're putting out 100 
And in order to do that, we have to continue evolving. We have to continue testing. We have to be able to dive into businesses, coach students' businesses personally through masterminds, through group coaching, through coaching, all that type of stuff. So we can see all the different variables to play with. Mm. Um, and that's that's been really important. That's what a lot of, I guess those would be sacrifices, but that's what a lot of my time consists of now yeah. with me, Crystal Aiden, our, our, our team and everything um, to kind of take things to that next level. Wow, man. That's, that's crazy. And in my, in my short time in the course, I mean, maybe since last July, I think like our business has changed so much now allowing us to my time. A lot of my time is like this and being able (laughs) to see like, what can we add to the business? Like what needs to be changed? What, what can be, you know, maneuvered. And it's so freeing Jordan to, to the fact that, you know, you're, you're, I got to imagine how you must feel like you're helping so many families Hmm. and I'll be at people who are actually serious about it. Cause it's just not an easy thing. You know, hundred percent, hundred percent. And that's so important as, uh, as well to, to know. And one one thing I always preach, cause man, it's impossible. No matter the best strategy that you have, the strategies the right strategies, the right plan, the right blueprint will always cut sometimes even years of what you want to accomplish. Yeah. You know, what took us, you know, what took us like five years to figure out and accomplish. Same. We see our <laughs> students doing it in months. Yeah. Literally in months now, as long as they're very serious yeah. in, in what they're doing. But it's still a lot of work. Everyone says it's a lot of work. Yeah. A lot of people forget that. They look for a magic pill. Mm. Um, and those are usually the people who won't be successful because they're, it's only, they're thinking of this, like one button click kind of a thing, you know, everything yeah. just explodes. Yeah. And, and, and speaking of magic pill, man, Jordan, one thing too, that has, I think it's essential if you really want to build your business is the aspect yeah. of your, the health, um, of yourself, because you mm. are your business. And one thing that has really changed surprisingly is just how mentally tough you mm. become when you had a really, really horrible day, kids crying, whatever, you're exhausted, but you have six calls you got to go do, or Ooh, you got to yes. you got go and, and watch, you got to watch your hour of the course, because this is, this is for a bigger purpose. So how have you seen your health, your mindset, your mental toughness change as you build your businesses? And why yeah. do you feel it's so important? That's quite a journey in itself right there. Because Maybe if, if you've heard a little bit of this in some of my old content and everything as well, but in the past, like when I was first in my wedding photography business, you know, I was, I was barely getting maybe two hours of work a day, mm. two hours of work a day, probably play video games, binge Netflix <laughs> the rest of the day and everything compared to now where sometimes I'm, I'm working eight to 12 hours a day, depending mm. on what the projects are. Sure. Uh, kind of a thing uh, if there's big projects going on I'll, I'll be pumping out like long days yeah days where it's pre- where it's where it's not so bad six eight hours a day but keeping right. this pretty consistent as far as that you're giving and yourself is, something to do every day basically. exactly exactly yeah and I, I I had balance in there as well sure, sure. Um, to you know have not just have work a, a big part of my life mm-hmm. but but the main point of that is just like as an endurance athlete can um, can grow their capacity to work. Mm. Maybe if they're training for a marathon and everything, you can do the same exact thing with your mind. To be I, able, I can attest to that. Yeah, that is very, very yeah. true. Very true. Hundred percent. And so, like it, it, but it takes. But the only thing is that people don't get past is it takes reps to do that. Mm-hmm. It takes and, reps and, and showing up on a on a bad day that you're not hundred percent, hundred percent. And you people, people often talk about, I believe in work, work life balance and like work, not being your, your, your total everything. But every once in a while, I'll see people almost use that as an excuse to not get past that current threshold where their mind is at. Mm. Yeah. Cause your, and, your mind has no choice, but to grow when you're saying to it, I'm not going anywhere right now. Exactly. Exactly. I'm going to finish this half rep or I'm going to just watch 10 minutes then if, if I can't do the hour. A hundred percent. And so you usually find this in, in times of stress. I think, I believe it was like Robert Greene uh, 
he was talking about it in his book book mastery and i was reading about this not too long ago mm-hmm. where how a marathon runner they'll they'll work on that capacity and sometimes you'll really see where the capacity of your mind in times of stress yeah and then when you allow yourself to push to those limits and you continue to do this consistently through time you can gradually increase that capacity that your mind can work that's crazy and less, yeah and you feel less stressed after after through that working out your mind You can Mm -hmm. continue doing that for long hours without feeling absolutely exhausted. And you learn this by reading like the psycho, like psychology type of books and stuff. I know Crystal has a, has a little bit of experience in psychology. It was actually after her, our coaching call, our the only coaching call we've had with her where she made us essentially in in the nicest way possible say, man, you got to change your mindset, Mm. your, I should, and, and what you say to yourself, because Maybe you can expand on it a little bit more, but the fact that you can literally, what you say out loud can rewire your brain and therefore rewire your personality. Mm, yeah. That is huge for your business. It is a hundred percent. I've told this story in, in some coaching calls and stuff before, but especially before I got good at sales with, with mm. wedding couples and everything, um, I used to be so nervous. Mm. And I'd get in these coaching calls with kind of a bad mindset. I was probably very sheepish, like the way I was kind of uh, approaching It makes you cringe myself. when you think about it, right? I, I, I hate yeah. I thinking yeah. about it. You know, I probably, I probably never want to see those, yeah. you know, those recordings or, or anything as well. But, um, and then I remember when, times when I'd get maybe rejected from a sale. Mm. I, I would just like sulk the, the rest of the day. Yeah. And I started reading a lot of like psychology um, and psychology books one of them was like breaking the habit of being yourself by dr joe dispenseza and just about like changing the way that your mind thinks to actually change who you are yeah and so before every sales call i would actually start um meditating and and actually giving myself affirmations thinking about the person i wanted to be the person who the person had to be to close this sale (laughs) yeah i mean the affirmations work like just even oh, Crystal said one thing, and please, if anyone like is yeah. listening and you feel down on yourself, it's like you it's okay to feel, you know, nervous or scared, or maybe you feel like you can't do it, but you gotta say, I am I can do this because I'm sitting here thinking about it, because I'm sitting here watching the course, because I'm sitting here spending five minutes on this, like I'm gonna get it done. I will get through this. And mm. saying that to yourself. Again, it rewires your brain and your mindset, and it gives you this, uh, it kind of can lift you, but you just have to say it out loud, even if you sound silly, because that was holding me back for a little bit too. hundred percent, a hundred percent. And I would actually do the same, same thing. Like if I was really nervous about like that sales call with a wedding couple or something, I would repeat over and over again, sometimes even out loud that like, I'm the best photographer in the city. Yeah. And, and, and they want to work with me yes. and that changed the way that I spoke with them that changed the way that I framed myself mm-hmm. you know um and that way you are framing yourself in a way where they are actually chasing you you're not in this desperate yeah. mindset where you're chasing them and they're like why is he acting like this <laughs> actually yeah. maybe we don't want to work with them and they don't yeah. even know the reason why you know right yeah and for myself sometimes I would feel that fear just because I'm like man what if I don't get this money like what what's gonna happen but then when you really step back you're just like it's easier to release attachment to that. Yes. When you know that you're breathing after the call still, because when you you think about it and changing your viewpoint of like, do I need all this money right now? Or the bigger picture is I'm healthy. The bigger picture is I'm grateful for at least having this call that happened. How do I get another one? Always changing your mindset can really allow you to like you said, have that confidence yeah. to, to pursue and close that call. Did you have, I know it took a lot probably, but like, did you have a little bit of that, like speaking personality or was that just repetition? You had to keep doing it. Yeah. Um, Cause it's different over the, over the computer, you know? Yeah. 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 When it came to my, I always had an outgoing personality. Okay. Um, so you were kind of a people person. When it came to that, I've, I've never always been the very, the most articulate person. Mm. Um, that's something even to, to this day, I'm more of a writer. I'm more of a, yeah. I'm more of a writer. And so I'm the same way I, my mind speaks a little bit faster. So I have to work on yeah. conversations like this. Yeah. I do much better with but Then if I'm just like, 
I've gotten better through time, but just like talking to a camera, speaking. Mm. But sometimes when it comes to that confidence, it, it just takes one, a lot of reps through the process, having that, that confidence. And then when you make that first sale through ever, like, you, you know, the wedding consultation oh, yeah. process we teach in the course. Yeah. It's like when students are, they feel really not very confident about it, but when they make that first sale, their mind explodes, all the opportunities explodes on like, it, oh my word, I can do this. It's a and game then they just changer. start rolling sales over and over again, you know? <laughs> and it's a, it's a process and it's just, it's funny. It was used on me by you. It's been used on many people. <laughs> like it's, it's how we buy things. Exactly. It's, it's why we buy things, right? It's, it's just crazy to think that like, you can't never hack a, the system or anything like that, but you can definitely understand how things work in the world. And yeah. that will get you very far as long as you're willing to put in the work. Um, what doubts did you have when you were starting? You know, because I know some of the doubts I have were just like, I don't know if I'm that good. I don't know if I can do this. Like, what were some of the thoughts running into this? Like as a young entrepreneur in the twenties, kind of figuring out, still having to balance life. Yeah. I'd say one of my biggest fears was, was being able to provide mm. was, was a big fear. I, I didn't want to be that starving artist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's how 100%. it was in the beginning. Yeah. Um, and I, another fear was, was, was just if I was able to figure it out because when you, when you first what I started, how I started seeing businesses in general was when you first start building a business and you start learning, maybe you start reading all these different books. You may read one book and you're like, oh, this is going to be the one solution that builds my business. And then you have all these missing pieces and you suddenly realize, wow, I only have one piece of a really complicated puzzle. Of something that changes even a little bit every year too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And it's like, and that's kind of why we focused like the program as well as building as a machine that has all the different parts that, that you need. Right. Um, but that's, that was kind of my fear when I realized, oh man, there's so much that I don't know. Will I be able to learn it in mm -hmm. time? Uh, yeah. Will I be able to gather all the information I, I need? All that type of stuff. Do feelings like that still creep into you, you know, getting into new stages of your growth in business? hundred percent, hundred percent. Very comforting so, to hear for someone, yeah. you know, of your, you know, your stature and your, in, in your business, it's comforting for other, other creatives to hear. Yeah. I'll tell you two things and I'll, I'll, I'll mention these two things. Cause these are both things that I was absolutely horrible at mm. and I overcame. Okay. And, and the first one was actually making videos. And this is kind of a funny story, <clears throat> but I remember four years ago when we first started the WLMA, I'm like, I'm going to start making videos. You know, this is some probably some may, people can get to know me a little bit better. This is yeah. something that we're going to do. I didn't, I had never had tried making a video in my life. Okay. And I remember I, I looked, I set up a camera. Uh, I, I looked at it and I had a plan of what I was going to say. And I would just start. And I started talking and I was like, Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jordan. Fuck. <laughs> and that went on literally for 30 minutes. I got oh so God. aggravated, so frustrated. And I was like, wow, this is so much harder than I thought. Like, I'm, I'm never going to try this again. I, I guess I really do suck at this. I'm just going to write and everything. I remember Crystal got back home and I was like, don't look at the camera. And she's like, oh, I really got to look at it now. And oh, she was man. watching the video and she was just laughing. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's great that you guys can laugh together. Though. Yeah. But even to this day, you know, people will watch like, even like the YouTube, the YouTube videos that we make now, people would never think that that was something that was an issue. And yeah. that's one thing that you have to do. No matter how bad you are at something, you can get good at it. You just have to, one, get reps in. Just yep. like you need to get reps in when you're learning a new physical skill mm -hmm. as an athlete. It's the same exact thing with business skills, with these types of skills that you need to use to get in front of people. Right. And then two, find ways that you work and work around those weaknesses. So for me, I, re I realized that I'm not one of those people who I can talk to a camera, speak for 30 minutes on a topic, no jump cuts or right. anything. And I, I found ways, I found programs that could help me make jump cuts for me so I could be a more seamless, more entertaining video yeah, and all that as well. Very cool. The second thing I would say is something that I'm actually experiencing now. And so I've mastered 
Facebook ads a, a long time ago. That was quite a journey in itself mm-hmm. where I, there was a many times where I didn't think it, it was, it was going to work. And I had to play around with all these different things. Now I've been experimenting a lot with YouTube ads, which is a lot more difficult, but a lot, but very powerful in itself with, uh, as well, man. I and so imagine. I learned about all the targeting, all these different things that I needed. And I remember the first three ads I ever made bombed. And I started, I started, um, thinking in my head, you know, maybe, maybe this actually won't work for me. And that temptation was, was, was happening. Wow. And just recently I started testing, like really paying attention to the variables. And this is why I mentioned to look at everything as like a scientific experiment. Where mm-hmm. are those leaks in the funnel? Where are those weaknesses that are happening in whatever those weak, weak variables. Mm-hmm. And I started to try to take a more bird's eye view, get myself out of my head a little bit created a whole new ad and now it's actually doing absolutely amazing awesome but it took breaking through those tough areas you Mm. can't allow yourself to fail a couple of times and just say it doesn't work for you yeah you really have to get a bird's eye view see where those weak variables are and keep testing (laughs) man jordan that is so comforting for me to hear because that's exactly what i tell myself now when yes. I, when things don't work, I mean, even just the other, even, uh, Saturday when we were just like doing our finances or like, why is the Facebook ad not on what, like what happened? Mm. Pixel this and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, Oh man. And at that moment I feel it gets my heart racing, but it's like, I feel discouraged. I'm like, man, dude, the last one did so good. That's how we're making our money. Like, what do we, yeah. what do we do? I'm just like, okay, stop. Take a look at everything do a little bit of research, take the next hour, which you have, you'll figure it out just like you figured it out twice before. So you really have to slow down when it comes to pushing through these pain points, almost like a, like foam rolling, right? You would, um, Mm. usually when you foam roll, sometimes you go over a a weak spot, right? It's tender, but you want to get off of it. But leaning into that is what allows the blood to flow through the muscle. Exactly. Exactly. And you'll, you'll see that in every aspect of the business in every skill that Mm -hmm. that you learn. And one of my favorite books is um, by Robert Greene mastery. Um, And I I love that book because Robert Greene, he's a psych, basically a psychologist and studies human nature. And he dives into all of these people who have mastered these skills and gives, gets the lessons out of those and pretty common theme is the amount of time they yeah. put into build mastering whatever those skills are, the amount of reps, uh, the, the way they thought out of the box and looked at things in different angles. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna be the same exact way. People and photographers can relate to this when it comes to their skills in photography, when it comes to building that skill in posing, when it came to sure. building that skill in how they light their subjects and composition. We forget that with business though. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't know what that is on why we forget that when it comes to the skills in business, when it comes business to ads and, and sales, yeah. it is. And, and you'll have to go through that same exact experience. Yeah. Um, it, it's like you're, it's like you live through this type of art of business and entrepreneurship because it's like, it's so many things. It's understanding like what these numbers mean and what this chart means. It's understanding how to use hand gestures and to enunciate and to sound commanding when you need to sound commanding, or it's all these different things that just change you as a human being. Like yeah. it's amazing to be someone that wants to step beyond just a typical um, job or a typical life. Like this is not an easy thing. Would you agree? Exactly. Yeah. hundred percent. And, and, you know, one thing I want to ask is, you know, there's so many different definitions of success, but you know, what would you define that as, you know, going through 10 plus years of, of work, how would you define that now as how has it changed from when you were younger? Mm. <clears throat> Great question. Um, I think, I think when I was younger, really diving into that, and my motivation was very much when it came to my, my pain, <laughs> mm-hmm. my pain, yeah. pain, desire to get out of that. It was probably just purely like money at, at that time. Sure. I think now um, success comes through, through one, building a mission that's that, uh, building a, 
a mission that's that's bigger than yourself yeah as far as that and and actually being going to help people in those areas whatever that may be maybe that's photography maybe that is through business um sure. as far as like entrepreneurship helping people in those areas but i feel like you can find a lot of fulfillment and helping people who are in troubled situations getting them out of there as well yeah um and and kind of just living a life that honestly you just feel happy about you know and that doesn't always come from money i think that those are factors that can help yep those are factors that definitely can help but um there's much more to to that as well and it's always continually evolving and that's why i think the end of the things the end of everything is more than just work of money but having that mission and mm -hmm. being able to unfold that in a way that truly makes you happy and fulfills you and everything Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does to me. Jordan, man, this was such an amazing conversation. And just just seeing, you know, how your 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 situation probably relates to a lot of people right now who are probably in a job that they don't want to be in, but feel like they have more to give. So I mean, once again, Jordan, you know, thank you to you, your wife, you know, the WMA team. I'll speak for myself. You know, it's my my family is is so happy. And we are truly grateful for, you know, the amount of time you've put into this. So for those of us um, who don't know where to find your work, I like to leave the last little bit for like plugs, where can people find the course, your photography, go ahead and plug away. Yeah, absolutely. So you can actually find us. And by the way, also so happy. It's our joy to help. And we've, we've loved seeing your growth as well, especially when you ring the bell in the community, Thanks. seeing those sales coming in. It's super exciting. And yeah, where, where you can find us, you can find us if you type in www.wlma.co. And if you really want to learn some of, honestly, some of our best strategies that we give away for free as well free. <laughs> on there, you can click on free training and there is a 40 minute workshop and masterclass that you can click on. You can even schedule a free strategy session with us as well. Um, and that's where you can find us and we can uh, see if and how we can help. We're always excited to take people to new, new levels. Our goal and, and our mission is to continue being the most result-based mastermind for wedding photographers and filmmakers uh, so we can take people to those really awesome levels time and time again. Wow. Jordan, thank you so much, man. I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. If it resonated with you, make sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button, that notification bell so you don't miss out on some of our best content. Comment any questions that you may have as well. If you want to follow We Are Creative Podcast, I'll add the link in the description along with some of our free resources if you want to scale your business to that six-figure or deep six-figure level. Anyways, guys, I'll see you on the next one.